cane toads are relentless invaders. <laughs> Native to Central America, cane toads were transported to sugarcane growing regions of the world early last century in the hope they would eat and eradicate beetles that were devastating sugarcane crops. This cane toad experiment held the promise of a cheap, permanent, and everlasting solution to a commercial problem. The experiment failed spectacularly. <laughs> cane toads showed no interest in the beetles whatsoever. Instead, they launched a global invasion of epic proportion. Cane toads reproduce at an astonishing rate. They eat just about everything, and they are highly poisonous across all life stages. Eggs, tadpoles, adults. Poisoning and killing virtually every potential predator. The release of just 100 adult cane toads in Australia a mere 80 years ago led to the current situation where hundreds of millions of poisonous toads now occupy millions of square kilometres of Australia, devastating native species as they advance across the nation. Cane toads poison and kill lizards, even large goannas. They even kill crocodiles. Cane toads poison and kill snakes including some of the most venomous in the animal kingdom. Even top-tier predators are not immune to cane toads. Cane toads poison and kill furry native species, such as the northern Australian quoll, and other furry friends, like dogs and cats. For many years, the only option for controlling cane toad numbers was the hand capture of adult toads, known as toad busting. Despite dispatching many tens of thousands of adult toads, toad busting alone is not the answer. Each new generation of toad replenishes and builds on the last, and the invasion continues unabated. In 2010, Time magazine placed the cane toad in the top three invasive species in the world. Cane toads truly are the Borg of the animal kingdom. And, unfortunately, at times, it seems as if resistance is futile. We set out to develop a new cane toad control solution, inspired by nature and capable of operating in parallel with toad busting. We targeted a cane toad life stage that had previously been deemed untouchable, the tadpole. Cane toad tadpoles are highly distinctive and easy to spot, emerging as black swarms of many thousands in the shallows of creeks, stams and backyard ponds when the weather is wet and warm. When it comes to finding cane toad tadpoles, we know exactly when and where to look, and what to look for. That toad tadpoles had not been targeted previously was due to the fact that they are almost impossible to catch by hand. They're far too many, and they are far too agile. Any attempt at hand netting risks disturbing fragile aquatic ecosystems and harming native species. Some 2,500 years ago, a Chinese general wrote, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Sound advice. If only we could subdue, subdue toad tadpoles without fighting and without turning fragile aquatic ecosystems into battlefields. But how? Ecologists had observed that cane toad tadpoles can hunt 
and eat the eggs of other female toads. There's a number of possible reasons for this. Tadpoles may be hungry, and the eggs are a nutritious snack. The tadpoles may be staking a territorial claim by eliminating genetic competition. Or the tadpoles could be repurposing the poison of the eggs to their own benefit. More importantly, it was also observed that toad tadpoles successfully hunt even in murky water with zero visibility. Regardless of why tadpoles eat eggs, the more important question was, how do tadpoles find eggs they can't even see? We discovered that toad tadpoles are drawn to a chemical attractant that is released by toad eggs. We isolated and identified this attractant. This was a eureka moment. But before we could use the attractant to control tadpole behavior to our advantage, we first had to dramatically increase our supplies. We knew we could extract the attractant from dead adult toads, but we would need a whole lot of dead toads. The call went out. <laughs> our bring out your dead appeal <laughs> worked. And we received hundreds, then thousands of dead toad busted toads. These were processed in our lab using an approach that was part CSI, part survivor, and part Mythbusters. Put simply, we used a giant stainless steel blender <laughs> to make toad smoothies, <laughs> from which we extracted large amounts of tadpole attractant. Next, we needed a way to deliver the attractant. The local pet store provided the answer in the form of air stones, small, porous stones about the size of a dice. Once painted with attractant, these stones became tadpole baits, or what we like to call bufo tabs. Finally, we went to the local hardware store to buy the materials to build a basic funnel trap. These consist of a simple plastic box with two plastic funnels inserted and glued into opposite ends. Funnel traps are cheap and easy to make. We were ready. Our theory was, if we placed a bufo tab in a funnel trap near a swarm of tadpoles, the tadpoles would detect and follow the attractant scent into the trap. The theory worked. When placed in the shallows where tadpoles congregate, a single bufo tab in a funnel trap attracted and trapped several thousand poisonous toad tadpoles in a couple of hours. As a bonus, the attractant is highly specific to toad tadpoles and doesn't attract frog tadpoles. Once trapped, the toad tadpoles could be harvested, humanely euthanized, and disposed of safely. To take the battle to the toad, we created the Cane Toad Challenge, a not-for-profit community engagement and citizen science initiative. We provide free baits and teach the public how to make and use their own traps. It's early days, but our tadpole trappers have already removed over a million poisonous toad tadpoles from local waterways. We may have started locally, but our plan is to go national and then global. So join us, trap tadpoles, and turn back the toad invasion. Thank you. <laughs>